الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم The next two names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're going to do are Al-Muzillu Al-Muzillu and Al-Khafiz They are the mirror opposite of the two names that we did yesterday, Al-Mu'izzu and Al-Rafi. Al-Muzillu means Allah Subhanahu is that being who can give zillat to a person, can give dishonor, disgrace to an individual. Those nations who left the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Allah gave them zillat. Allah abased them, gave them humiliation. And those individuals who left, left the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them zillat and disgrace. The second name of Allah ta'ala is al khafiz the abaser. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give rafat, rank, dignity to a person. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring down a person from a rank. And if you look at the history of Islam, in fact, the history of the creation, we see that there are few creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that because of disobedience to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them down in rank. The first thing which brings a person down, which causes disgrace to a person, is hasad. And the greatest example that we have is that of shaitan. Shaitan was, uh, his name was Azazil, and he was a jinn, the most kabil, the most, had a lot of ability among the entire species of jinn. Imagine if someone says that so-and-so is the greatest doctor alive or the greatest physicist alive or the greatest professor alive. Iblis was the greatest jinn alive at that time. He was not just merely Kabil. He was the most Kabil of his entire race. He had many attributes. He had ilm of Allah. He had knowledge of Allah, marifat of Allah. He also had a lot of ibadah. He had done so much ibadah because of which he was with the angels. He was hanging around with the angels. He had a religious acceptance, a religious kabiliya. He was the top of the game, the master creation of Allah at that time. And then when Allah subhanahu wa created Sayyidina Adam and Islam, gathered all the angels, to witness his creation. He also called Iblis. It means that Iblis was so skilled, so advanced and accomplished in Ibadat that even Allah subhanahu wa chose to specially call him in that assembly, which otherwise was exclusively reserved for angels. 
and he had so much intelligence that when he saw Allah Taala creating Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salam, he realized that Adam Alayhi Salam was made from elements that are found in the earth, and he knew that I am made from fire. So he said to Allah Taala, "Ana khayrum min, I am better than him." He reasoned with Allah Taala using his intelligence, and he refused to do sajda before Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salam because of his hasad, and because of that hasad and envy and jealousy that he had, he became mardud. He became a regime, rejected, repudiated. He was denied, deprived. And what was the extent of his denial? What was the extent of his rejection? Such a rejection that he had to listen to these words of Allah Taala, that "Fakhruj minha fa inna karaji." Allah saying that get out of here, for you're rejected. So imagine that Sayyidina Adam al Islam when he was created, he felt that competition, professional rivalry. This is called envy. He became envious of Sayyidina Adam al Islam that Allah created him. Allah blew His own spirit inside of him. Specially created him. Everyone is being told to do such that he couldn't stand that preferential, preferential treatment. Became jealous, and blinded by his envy. He forgot that he was a creature like Adam and Eve. Allah Taala had created him also. He became upset with Allah. That why did Allah Taala? Why did you create him? Why did you honor him? Why did you bless him? Why did you praise him? Why did you make him Khalifa to life and earth, your deputy on this earth? And then he refused to do sajda. And not just upset, but he had the ultimate degree of hasad. That I will do everything in order to deprive Sayyidina Adam Alayhi Salam and his progeny from this honor. But the result of that envy, any whoever has envy, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala abases that person, abases that creation, and as a result, Shaitan, who was once the pinnacle of honor, the pinnacle of success and glory, and he came down into this abyss of disgrace, ultimate failure. He had to hear this lanati ila yawmiddin. This lanat from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for all of eternity. So envy always leads towards loss, and always brings a person down. Yani, this attribute is so disliked by Allah Taala that whoever has this, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala brings that person down. Similarly, we have the story of Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and his eleven brothers. They also had envy towards Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam. They were they also thought that we are very able, capable, strong. And they noticed that their father had a special love for Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam because he was the sifa, he possessed qualities, and that's why they became envious. They wanted to be the apple's eye of their father. And they did mashwar amongst them, and they decided to throw him inside a well. That he will no longer be there; he will get our father's attention. And again, what was the result of their envy? Allah Taala saved him. Then Yusuf alayhi salam, he did not retaliate, he did not respond. He left the mamla in the hands of Allah. And whenever a person leaves it in the hands of Allah, they don't respond on their own. Then Allah's father becomes sufficient. Allah gives honor to that individual. And so then Yusuf alayhi salam was saved, and Allah Taala made him the ruler of Egypt. But then what happened to the brothers? They it was a famine in the region, and then once they came begging for some wheat and grain, and get, and said that Oh my, give us sadka. And at that time, then Yusuf alayhi salam, he saw them. That they are pleading, they are in grave distress and difficulty. Give sadaqa to us. And so then Yusuf alayhi salam saw that these are sons of the Ambiya, right? Ten of them, but now in such a difficulty that they are pleading like beggars. And at one time they were very able, capable. They would say that we are not no uspa, we are a strong group. But because of hasad, Allah subhanahu wa taala brought them down, and they became and were pleading like beggars. The result of hasad is that it always brings down a person. 
hasrat always leads to the downfall for the hasrat and we look at this uh, we can look several examples if a calm a community had hasrat allah brought them down and if individuals had hasrat allah tala brought the individuals down second thing which is also very disliked by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and which brings the downfall of a person is takabbur arrogance and this is the story about firawn and all those people who had takabbur shaitan also had hasad but he also had takabbur and as a result allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him down then called the many many tribes and strong communities that have passed in history like ad and samud they were very strong a lot of quwwat and wealth but because of that wealth and strength they were intoxicated they became intoxicated and they lost their own they lost that humility which allah wants to see they were very tall in their height physically they were about 60 hands high 60 hands tall they would make their houses using uh, carving making cutting mountains and there are a lot of um, they they re- they realize their strength but then when they disobeyed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they became arrogant allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought them down and they became all of them passed away there was a wind that a, a very there was a wind storm and that wind came and then slammed all of them down on the ground and everyone passed away so communities and those societies which had arrogance allah demolished them and when individuals they had arrogance allah tala brought them down firawn he was also had a lot of qualities maybe not in a good way but still very able he was a tyrant a dictator but at the same time he also had his arrogance and he used to say that oh my people this dominion of egypt it belongs to me these rivers that are flowing wahazi al anhar tajri min tahti these rivers that are flowing they're under they're flowing underneath my palace afala tubsirun don't you see all of this he used to say this that do you not see that i have become absolute dominion and have absolute sovereign sovereignty over complete egypt that i am ana rabbukum al a'la i am the rabb i am the lord the greatest lord that all of these rivers are flowing underneath my throne my crown my rule in other words he felt that he ruled in nature the land of egypt itself but when he had arrogance then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him down allah tala based him and we know this because allah says this in the quran shaitan was a rajim he was rejected and what does allah tala say about firawn when allah tala addresses musa alayhi salam he says that is hab ila firawn innahu taga that go to its firawn for he has become a transgressor he is a rebellious traitor to his rab and then all of you know what happened that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused him and all of his army to be drowned inside the river and on the other hand say that musa alayhi salam he was saved by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah ta'ala gave him a rank and it's ajeeb that musa alayhi salam who belonged to the oppressed tribe of bani israil who when he was a baby he put a hot coal on his tongue and because of that he spoke with a lisp and a slur and the quran makes dua to allah that allah untie this knot on my tongue he is not eloquent he is not well spoken not educated no power no kingdom no rule no position no status but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him up allah tala raised him up because of his itaat and obedience because of his taqwa because of his taluq with the quran because of his taluq with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he became kalimullah he had taluq with the kalam of allah kalimullah allah sent a revelation of tajalli upon him gave him so many miracles 
So this is the tartib, this is the sequence of Allah that whoever goes on this path of disobedience, Allah Ta'ala brings them down. They become envious, have harsad, Allah brings them down. Arrogance brings down a person. And on the other hand, if a person follows the path of obedience, ita'at, ibadat, and they have ajizi, humility before Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa raises them up, even if they don't have any worldly means. Just like Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. In fact, he was so worried about the worldly, about the, about the worldly means that he doesn't have all those worldly, he's not well-spoken, well-educated, not eloquent. That he actually asked Allah Ta'ala for help. That Allah make my brother a prophet also. And Allah Ta'ala accepted that dua made his brother Sayyidina Harun al Islam and Nabi. And however, notwithstanding that Sayyidina Harun al Islam was extremely eloquent and well spoken person, yet who became Kalimullah? It was Sayyidina Musa al Islam, not Harun al Islam. Allah Subhanahu spoke with Sayyidina Musa al Islam, not with Harun al Islam. So Allah is that and Zillat is in the hands of Allah Subhanahu and we should remember and understand one principle that itaat me izzat hai, that there is izza and honor in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa and masiyat me zillat hai. And there is disgrace, humiliation, abasement in sins, in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa We can see this throughout all the generations when we come at the time of the Prophet again, we had two Omars. There were two Omars in the tribe of Quraysh who had the same name, Omar. One was Omar ibn Khattab, the other was Omar ibn Hisham. And during the time, which was prior to the time of the manifestation of Nabuwa, this person, Omar ibn Hisham, was known as a very strong person, strong member of the tribe of Quraysh, very intelligent, extremely capable, one of the most well-respected leaders of the clan of Quraysh. People would come to him whenever they had any problem. He was a master problem solver, master troubleshooter. And he had a lot of rank and, and is a worldly honor in that society at that time. And on the other hand, we had the second Omar, Omar bin Khattab, radiallahu And on the other hand, he was viewed as a person who could not solve anything. A person who had no weight, was not a leader of the Quraysh. And his father used to say that, Omar, you can't even graze camel. What will happen to you? You will not be able to achieve any status. So these were the two Omars. Omar ibn Hisham was so wise, so intelligent, that everyone used to call him Abu Hikam that you are the father of wisdom. This was like a kunya, surname in Arabic language. If one thinks that someone possesses something at a very high level, then they might give him, call him Abu something, father of that thing. So he reached the height of accomplishment in intelligence and wisdom. That's why people used to say he's Abu Hikam. In contrast, Umar bin Khattab was considered as a less than ordinary, even intelligence. And he used to tease him that, Omar, you're the small Omar, you're Omer. I'm the real Omar. But later on, because of this arrogance that Abu Hikam had, this was that same Abu Hikam who after the Blessed Prophet manifested his Nabuwa, he was viewed by the Prophet as the most foolish person. And the Prophet kept his name as Abu Jahl, father of ignorance. And now, the entire world remembers him as Abu Jahl. Even if one picks up books published by Harvard and Oxford, they all refer to him as Abu Jahl. So he had a lot of hikmat, he had a lot of intelligence, but because of his disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this path of rejection, denial, kufr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him down. And Allah Ta'ala gave, abased him in such a way that who that person was known as Abu Hikam is now known by everyone as Abu Jahal. He also had a lot of takabbur, had a lot of arrogance. And as a result of that arrogance, he came down.
and he had so much arrogance that even though he knew that the prophet system was a true nabi but because of his arrogance he refused to believe and on the other hand hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was a die hard sahabi very short in height he was thin, you know very short thin and smart and sometimes abu jahl would give tanna would give taunt would taunt him and say that you are a small shepherd ruwai al ghanim small shepherd and then hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was the embodiment of humility however understand how allah taala gives izzat to humble people and how allah taala brings down people who are arrogant hazrat abdullah bin masud versus abu jahl hazrat abdullah bin masud is very he is an embodiment of humility and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam at this night of laylatul jinn when he was giving dawahs to the jinn he said that today that person will go with me who doesn't have one drop of arrogance in his heart and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam took abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu anhu with him then anyway, we have the stamp of approval of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam certified and now look at the chain look at the turn of events at the battle of badr abu jahl is there fighting and he's almost killed by by two small muslim kids and now he's lying on the ground last moments of his life and the, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had to send a sahabi to chop off his head and he selected the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam selected hazrat abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala an the takabbur the arrogance of abu jahl will be defeated by the humility of sayyidina abu abdullah bin masud radhiyallahu ta'ala an when he says that when i reached i sat on his chest and had the sword in my hand and at that time abu jahl said to me that tell your nabi that the hatred i had for him on the first day my hatred hasn't lessened one drop any up even in the last moment he had so much arrogance and hatred and then he said a second thing the manu chop my head slice it from below the neck so that my head is raised among all the other heads so that my head is raised up when it's lined up against all the other heads and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam found out about this and he said that the firaun of my ummah turned out to be a greater firaun than that of musa alaihi salam because in the last moments of his life the firaun of musa he said amantu bi rabbi musa i believe in the rabb of musa alaihi salam but my firaun he has so much hatred that he is saying that slice my head in such a way so that my head remains elevated so whoever has ar- arrogance allah taala brings that person down and whoever has humility allah subhanahu taala gives rank and is that to that part, to that individual similarly in bani israil there was a very big worshipper of allah taala by the name of balam baur and once he had this arrogance inside of him allah subhanahu taala rejected his 400 years of ibadah that was rejected and he came down allah taala based him allah taala does not wish for a person to have this may this arrogance inside of him this arrogance kibriyai is something which is the chadar the robe of allah subhanahu taala Allah is kabir Allah is akbar and whoever tries to have this arrogance and view themselves to be great or mighty or majestic then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings that person down and makes that person a sign an example for other people so we have to learn this lesson today this is the main message of these two names that whoever follows the path of obedience then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise that person up allah taala when a person they make themselves from the tip of their hairs to the soles of their feet in a way that they're pleasing to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate them allah will grant them such a maqam that their hukum will become nafiz on the world sahaba would apply the command of allah on themselves Allah would apply the commands of sahaba on the world that's how it works
Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala no, he was given so much izzat, so much rank, that his hukum used to be applied on the earth. The fire used to obey his hukum. The earth, once there was a fire in Madinah Munavra, and one sahabi came to Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala with that news, and Sayyidina Umar said that, here, take this kambal, this chadr, and you can use this to extinguish that fire. And then Sabi started slapping that fire with that chadar, and it was finally extinguished. There was once an earthquake in Madinah Manavra, and Sayyidina Omar, he had this stick, Asa, in his hand, and he struck, he, he hit the ground and said, that, Why are you trembling? Has Umar, done ever, has Umar ever done any injustice on you? And he said this, and the earth became stationary. Hadad Saad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he drove his horses into the rivers of Iran. And when they came on the other side, he asked his people, his, uh, his companions, that are you, any, are you missing anything? And one sahabi said that, yes, I'm missing my piala, my cup. And Sayyid, and says, Saad radiallahu he ordered that river, that we're missing this cup, we want this cup back. And one wave came and it brought that cup back to them. Hadrat Uqba bin Nafi was sent to Africa. And he announced that whatever animals are here living in the jungle, they should evacuate because the Sahaba of the Prophet will want to spend the night here. It wasn't a request, it was a command. And it's written that the wild animals, they were, cl they were clutching their cubs in their mouth and they were moving away. So we have to remember the principle is very simple. If a person loves Allah and obeys Allah, Allah makes them imam, makes them the leader of the entire alam, of the entire world. And if a person loves the creation of Allah, makhluk, ghayrullah, and they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah makes them the ghulam of the entire earth. They become like a slave of other people. If we want to be imam, the leader of the, of the world, we have to start obeying Allah Ta'ala. And when a person starts obeying Allah completely and fully and truly, they become true mu'min, a kamil mu'min. Then Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala gives them such a maqam and a rank that Allah Ta'ala applies their hukum, their rulings on the, on the earth. Because they applied the hukum of Allah Subh'anaHu on themselves and Allah Ta'ala loves them so much that Allah now will apply their hukum on this earth. They raise their hands in dua and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa accepts their dua. But as long as a person has love for the dunya, this love for the dunya has to leave the heart first and love for Allah has to come inside. The heart has to be filled with the love for Allah. Then Allah will place the dunya at your feet. Dunya is like a shadow. The more you start chasing, it will keep moving ahead. But the moment you turn away, then dunya will start chasing you. Hadrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala no, you see that we used to use, and I had so much wealth that we would use an axe to break gold bricks. And if you want to use an axe to break those gold bricks, that gold would not be grams, it would be kgs, kilogram. They would get it, but they wouldn't know how to spend this wealth. This happens when the love for dunya leaves the heart and the heart is filled with the love of Allah, then Allah places the dunya at the feet. And at the opposite side, we see that those nations who left the path of Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala gave them zillat. Hadrat Abu Darda radiallahu ta'ala no, he was crying at the conquest of Cyprus. Someone asked him, why are you crying when Muslims have won? And at that time, Abu Darda replied that before this, the people of Cyprus, they were a very strong and a powerful nation. They left the commands of Allah Ta'ala, which is why now they're facing humiliation, abasement and defeat. In Quran, Allah mentions the real reason for hunger and fear. Not many people, we think that because this just happens on its own. Nein. 
Allah mentions the story of a nation in Quran. That Allah gave them many blessings. They had a lot to eat. They had a lot of security, aman. But then they left the commands of Allah Ta'ala and Allah Ta'ala gave them the libas of khawf and jew. Allah Ta'ala gave them this garment of fear and hunger. Listen to Quran. وَذَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا قَرْيَةً كَانَتْ آمِنَةً مُتْمَئِنَّ This example of a nation where they were amin, amin, no external threat, aman. Mutmainna, itminan. There was no internal threat. Ya'tiha rizquha ragadan min kulli makan. They would have risk from in every household. They were economically very prosperous. But then, fakafarat bi'an umillah. They denied the name of Allah. They did not acknowledge, they were not grateful to Allah for those blessings. And as a result, what happened? That Allah put them into food and economic crisis, hunger, and Allah put them in the state of fear. So disobedience, it leads to zillat, leads to humiliation and crisis. And if you look at our own reality, our current situation, people have this be'itmanani at an individual level, communal level. Reason is because we have left the commands of Allah. And the solution is back in our deen. If from the tips of her hair to the soles of her feet, you can start doing amal on the Quran, Sunnah and Sharia, then Allah subhanahu wa will also raise us, will give us izzat, will give us, will give us rafat and bulandi and height. This is the reason why we have no value these days. The solution is identified in, in the Quran. That individual who acts on this Quran, Sunnah, Allah will give them izzat. A society who acts, Allah Ta'ala will give that society izzat. Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, he would say, the man kana yuridu izzat bila ashira. That if you want to get izzat without any relatives. Probably sometimes, you know, people think I have relatives, I will get dignity through them. He says, no. If you want to get izzat without any relatives, one nasla bila kasra, and you want to get progeny without a, well, you get progeny without abundance. Wal ghina bila malin, and you want to become wealthy, self-sufficient, then fal yatahawal min zul al maasiya ila izzat taati. You should turn away from the zillat of ma'asiyah to the izzat of itaat. You should turn away from the humiliation of sins, of disobedience, to the honor of obedience of Allah subhanahu wa And I'll end with three ayat of the Quran. And these are ayat we can reflect on. And if you can watch out for these three verses in our life, and if you can be wary of these three verses, and if you can live by these three verses, then inshallah we can hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant us the ability to become people who have izza in this life, izza in the next life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save us from humiliation and embarrassment in this dunya and in akhirah. The first verse is actually a very scary verse. It's not scary in the way that one would imagine. It's not about punishment of hell. Rather, it's scary because it describes our reality. And it describes specifically the reality of our condition. Allah says in Quran that Sanas min ya'lamun. That we shall lead them step by step, step by step, will bring them down. Darja by darja, we will bring them down. We'll bring them to the ruin without their even perceiving it. Allah is saying that He will, in the near future, slowly but surely bring us down in a rank in such a way that we will not even be able to realize this. 
that we will experience a gradual decline in our religion in such a way that we may not even notice this. Before you used to do more worship, gradually we'll start to do less. Before we used to pray more night vigil, tahajjud, now we are praying less. Before we used to pray more voluntary salah, nafil, gradually we'll starting to pray less. Before we used to read Quran, gradually we'll start reading less. Before we used to have taqwa, gradually we'll start to have less. And is this not something what we all say, right? That I was like this, but I'm going down. And what is scary is that not that we are going down, but Allah is taking us down. Why? Because we haven't made tawbah from our sins. The early Muslims, they used to worship the whole night and they used to say, Ma abadana ka haqqa ibadatik that we have not worshipped you, Allah, as it was your right to be worshipped. They used to stand most of the night in worship. And at the time of Fajr, they used to be seeking maghfirah from Allah. bil ashaarihum yastaghfirun. However, we feel that we are going down. And some of, as an ummah, we are going down. Some of us may feel as individuals, slowly, surely going down. So one ayah to think about. And the second verse in Quran is about the Prophet who mentioned in clear hadith that refers to Abid of Bani Israel who worshipped Allah for 400 years but then fell into the sin of following his desires. Balam Ba'ur. He followed his desires and the story is that once Sayyidina Musa Islam and Bani Israel were told to go fight and do jihad with a particular qaum which was known as Jabbarin. And this Balam Ba'ur was from the, within that Qaum, Jabbarin. And he was a pious servant of Allah. He was Mustajab Dawat. Mustajab Dawat means that his du'as were accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the people of that community, of that city, they came to Balam Ba'ur and said that you are so pious and we think that Musa Islam and Bani Israel will attack us. So make du'a against them. And Balam Baur said that, no, I cannot make this du'a because he's, Sayyidina Musa is a messenger of Allah Ta'ala. So he refused. But then the people again came back to him and said that, no, we want you to make du'a for us. So he said that, okay, I will do istikhara with Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala, mashbara with Allah. And if Allah wants me to make bad du'a, then I will make bad du'a. Otherwise, I will not. He did his sakhara and then he told the people very simply that I cannot make bad dua because they are the anbiya of Allah and they have the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the people of that city, they tried to tempt him with, with wealth and they brought a lot of gifts, a lot of hadiya gifts and they presented those presents to him. And Balam Ba'ur, he accepted that. He accepted that and in his love for wealth and in his love for women, he ended up committing that sin. And after that, he said that, okay, fine, I'm going to make dua. And he made, and it's ajeeb that when he started making bad dua against Musa al-Islam and Bani Israel, he would be saying something, but that bad dua, the words that would come out from his tongue would be against his own self and his own community. And the people were surprised that we're asking you to make bad dua against Musa al-Islam and Bani Israel and you're making bad dua against us. He said, I don't have any control. I have been deprived now and I re have realized that I have gone down in my rank. I cannot control my words. I cannot control my tongue. And then when he knew that now he has lost everything, 400 years of Ibadah lost everything, and when he realized his fate now, then what's going to happen with him? So as a last trap, he said that, okay, uh, he gave them a strategy that send your women to Bani Israel and ask them to commit zina with the soldiers in Bani Israel. And that is what happened. That's what eventually saved his people. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this person in the Quran. This Balam Ba'ur, 400 years of ibadah, but then he fell into that sin. And Allah Ta'ala said about that person in the Quran, فَمَثَلُهُ كَمَثَلِ الْقَلْبِ There's example is that of a dog. Even after 400 years of worship, this worshiper is being likened to a dog. Why? Because of his unlawful desires. He gave in to his unlawful desires. He committed those sins. He went against the hukum of Allah. And it shows that we should be worried about, we should try to make tawbah of these sins like hasad, takabbur, and giving in to our unlawful desires because they bring a person down in the sight of Allah Ta'ala. And last, we'll end with one story. This story has been mentioned. This story helps us understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can increase the rank of a person and how Allah ta'ala can decrease a person's rank. It has been mentioned by Ibn Jawzi and also by Shaykh al Hadith Mahana Zakaria al Kandilvi Rahmatullah. Very famous story, in fact, mentioned many of our classical books of Islamic tradition. And it's a story of Shaykh Abdullah Andalusi Rahmatullah, who was the Shaykh of Hadith Shibli Rahmatullah and a very big alim a very big Hadith scholar of his era, and half is a Quran. And once the Sheikh was traveling for the sake of the deen, and he was accompanied by a group of his students of the deen. And during his journey, they happened to walk by a place where there was a Christian house of worship in which he saw there were some Christians and their, their symbol, the cross was there. So when he saw the cross, he silently thought in his heart that how foolish are these people that they're worshipping this cross. That's it. That's all he thought. Then when they reached a stop, he went to a well and his eyes fell on a woman. And the Prophet ﷺ has said in the Hadith that sometimes shaitan uses a woman. Doesn't mean that a woman is necessarily bad, but that shaitan uses the temptations of the material world, dunya the beauty of the world to ensnare and entrap a person. So Shaykh Abdullah Andalusi Rahmatullah, one of the biggest Hadith scholars, a friend of Allah, Waliullah, the Shaykh of Shibli Rahmatullah, his gaze fell on that woman and he became empty from inside. And he told the students that leave me, I'm for her now. And thereafter he went and asked the village people for details about this girl. And they told him that she is the daughter of so and so and directed him to her house. Next, he went to that place, he knocked at the door and he told the girl's father that I would like to propose for your daughter. The man, the girl's father, he replied that we are Christians and it looks like you are a Muslim. The sheikh said, yes, I'm a Muslim. So father, then he said that I can only give you my daughter if you stay with me for one or two years, I'll have to see. And also in those one or two years, there'll be no salah for you. And the sheikh agreed. Then the girl's father continued that moreover, there'll be no Quran for you. And the sheikh again accepted. The father went further and said that in those one or two years, you will not be my shepherd, you will be my pig herd. I have a flock of pigs and you will herd them, you will wash them, clean them. You will tend to the pig, the pigs that we have. And to this even the sheikh, he agreed. And upon seeing this, naturally all the students of the sheikh could not believe their eyes. That sheikh who we used to see on the member of the masjid, who used to give dars on hadith to thousands of students, that sheikh who gave lessons in the remembrance of Allah, and Tazakiyah to thousands of seekers, they could not believe what had happened. And gradually, one by one, the students also went back. They left the Sheikh. And there was one student named Shibli Rahmatullah. And this was part of the Kabulia, the acceptance of that Sheikh to have such a student. That student came back. He couldn't stand being without his teacher. He returned to that village and he started searching for his sheikh. And soon he found him and he saw the disgraceful condition 
the Sheikh was in. So he then approached his teacher and asked him that, Oh Sheikh, you were half is a Quran. Do you still remember Quran? And he said, No, I've forgotten the Quran except for one verse. So Shibli Ramadullah asked that Sheikh, what is that verse? And Sheikh recited this verse from the Quran. Woman Yuhinillahu Fama Lahu Mimukrim. And the one whom Allah Subhanahu degrades has none to make him worthy of honor. Allah Akbarat. And when Shibli Ramatullah heard this, he, he was extremely distressed. He started weeping. Then he asked another question that, Oh Shaykh, you were a hafiz of hadith. Do you still remember hadith? However, the Shaykh replied that, No, I've forgotten all of hadith except for one. Shibli Ramatullah asked, that, Which one is it? And Shaykh recited the following hadith that, Man baddala deenahu. Faktuluhu. That person who changes his religion, you should kill him. And Shibli Rahmatullah was stunned that Sheikh this hadith. And he then cried and cried and he wept and he made dua to Allah Ta'ala. Later, he too left that place and started to walk back. He was feeling empty at the thought that his Sheikh only remembers this verse and only remembers this hadith. However, while walking back, at some point he saw his sheikh again, his teacher again. But this time he looked, that sheikh looked and seemed like a very real sheikh. So quickly he returned back to his teacher and said that Sheikh Abdullah Andalusi and asked him, Oh Sheikh, what happened? What happened? I see some difference on your on your face, some something, something's different about you. And then the Shaykh replied that after you cried and made dua to Allah and then went back, I was left alone. And I got the tawfiq from Allah to cry. And then I started crying. And I started crying. And I started making dua to Allah. Tara. That, oh Allah, this was my student. He was my student. Oh Allah, you have lowered me so much, disgraced me so much deprived me so much, rejected me so much, Allah, I make toba to you. I make repentance to you. How can a person turn as quickly as possible from being a mardud to a makbul? Allah, I do toba to you. How can a person turn, flip this in one moment from being rejected disgraced, lowered, deprived, to becoming accepted and acceptable in the sight of Allah, to becoming blessed in the sight of Allah, Allah, I do toba to you. I do toba of this two-facedness. I do toba of this hypocrisy. I do toba of this insincerity. Allah, I do toba. And the Sheikh said that at that moment, I was finally gifted with, gifted with tears. And I made true Tawbah to Allah and Allah Ta'ala accepted my Tawbah. And after that, I started to remember all of the Quran again. I started to remember all of the Hadith again. And now Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala has allowed me to come back. The story ends here and then the Shaykh goes on to become one of the most makbul friends of Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala, awliya of Allah, one of the most one of the greatest scholars of hadith. And in fact, it is written in the biography of Muhaddisin that his lessons on hadith after this incident were many, many times larger than his lessons before this incident. So we realize then that if we want to make this flip, if we want to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the method is to have tawbah. It was through his toba and through his humility, through his realization, through his worry that I've become rejected, I've been lowered by Allah, that Shaykh Abdullah Andalusi Rahmatullah was able to return and make himself, make himself acceptable to Allah. Today is a very blessed night. It's 21st of Ramadan and this can be Laylatul Qadr. 
and Allah says in Quran that this night is better, Laylatul Qadr is better, Khayru min alf shahr, better than thousand months, more than eighty years. Eighty years is our lifetime, which means that if we can do ibadah, I mean, we can make toba on this night, then it's as if we have made toba for our entire lifetime. We have done ibadah for our entire lifetime. So tonight we can also at the very least make this niyat and intention of Tawbah that Ya Allah, we want to come back to you. Allah, we realize our mistake. I make Tawbah to you of my hypocrisy, of my sins. I make Tawbah to you of my insincerity. I make Tawbah to you of my two-facedness. I make Tawbah for everything, Allah, that is displeasing to you. Oh Allah, you have said in the Quran, that in Allah hashtara min al mu'minina anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah. That indeed Allah has bought from the believers their own selves. Allah, you are saying in the Quran that you have bought us. You have bought us from us. You have bought ourselves. Allah, you have bought our wealth. You have bought our property. All that we have. Allah, we are sold. Oh Allah, we too are sold. O oh Allah, you have bought us already. And O oh Allah, it is against your mercy and your generosity that you reject us. That you return that which you have bought. That you reject that which you have bought. However insincere we are, Allah, however bad we are, Allah, still we have iman in our heart. Allah, still we have love for you, love for the Prophet Wasallam. Allah, still we are sold, we are in your possession. And Ya Allah, we ask you to accept our forgiveness also. Allah, accept our repentance also. Allah, accept us among the rank of the believers, the mu'mineen. And Allah, accept us among the rank of those who are pleasing to you. Allah, grant us also acceptance and honor in this dunya and honor in al-akhirah. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Inshallah, make dua. Subhanallah, <laughs> Ya Rabbi Kareem, zalamna anfusana. Allah, we have done zalam on ourselves. Allah, we have oppressed ourselves. Allah, we have allowed ourselves to become distant from you. Allah, we are drowning in our sins. Allah, we are drowning in our ghaflat. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we come to you tonight. Allah, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins. Allah, if you don't forgive us tonight, Allah, if you don't shower us with your mercy and rahmah, Allah will be amongst the lost ones. Allah will be amongst the losers. Allah will be amongst the khusran. Ya Rabbi Kareem. Allah, we ask you to accept our tawbah tonight. Allah, wipe away all of our sins. All the sins that we remember. All the sins that we have forgotten. All the sins that we did during the day. All the sins that we did during the night. All the sins that we did with our eyes, with our tongue, with our limbs. All the sins that we did in our heart. All the sins that we thought about in our mind. Ya Rabbi Kareem. Wipe away every last drop of sin. Ya Rabbi Kareem. Purify us from every last drop of sin. Ya Rabbi Kareem. We come to you tonight in true Tawbah. Allah, your beloved Nabi Salatu Salam said, Ataibu min al-dhambi kaman la dhamba lahu. That a person who makes Tawbah is like that person who's never ever sinned. Ya Rabbi Kareem. 
Allah, we ask you to accept our tawbah tonight. Ya Rabbi Kareem, include our names amongst the ta'ibin. Allah, every night, thousands of people, the names are taken out from the list. Allah, the names are emancipated from the hellfire. Ya Rabbi Kareem, tonight, let this be our turn. Allah, take our names out from the list of those people. Ya Rabbi Kareem, grant us Jannah. La grant us khalasi and itkum minan nar. Ya Rabbi Kareem, accept our tawbah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, 